Alps is a revolutionary software that will help you quickly design conceptual grading, stormwater, and layout plans. You can do this in Imperial or Metric. Well, let's just jump into the tool and take a quick look. Now you can start with something as simple as nothing and just start drawing boundaries and buildings or you can come in and maybe you want to use one of our tools that allow you to go out to the internet and grab some data. So we're going to quickly add in an address. But if by all means if you had a DWG file sent off to survey, you could bring that data in as well and start from that point or just enter in a project and have the software just do grading and piping. So we're going to enter in an address in Concord, North Carolina. We'll zoom into this project and we'll be able to see it, be able to grab the data. We want higher or low resolution imagery. Do we want topography? Again, select the data that we want to use. Now, there we go. We now have an aerial image and some existing topography to start working with our project. So let's turn off the layer and let's get in and start actually performing a layout. So we need to define the boundary. So we'll quickly use a thing called other area, define this boundary, and there we go. We've now set this boundary for the project. Now Let's come in. Now parametric design is what is the basis of site ops. Again, everything in here has property. For example, I'm on a property line. I just went and changed, just changed the setbacks to zero. But let's come in, zoom the image down a little bit, and I'm going to show you examples of what parametric design is and how these objects interact with each other. So let's quickly draw a parking lot. Now again, I'm just saying quickly because you're going to see that within seconds we can draw hundreds of parking spaces that normally would take hours to do. There we go. There's a parking lot. So I can now look at the properties on the right hand side. Let's say for example, I wanted to change the angle of the parking space. It's 60 degrees. There we go. Now this is not a static parking lot design either. This is very dynamic. Pick on any corner, move things around, change radiuses. Very interactive site plan. So let's come in and just put a simple building. Maybe a 100 by 200 and see how that reacts. Instantly, the parking moves away. And if you notice on the right hand side, the properties for the building are completely different than they are for the parking lot. Let's say we want sidewalk. Let's come in and make it a little wider so we can put in some tables for a restaurant. Then the client asks for just something simple. Let's come in, let's rotate it, let's move it along the southern property line. SiteOps is here to help you look at all your conceptual designs really easy, quickly, but yet still give the client everything they need. Now, again, this is just a quick glance into the parametric design, so let's just add a quick driveway. Simple, just pick on the parking lot where I want to tie in, go out to the existing roadway, there, we're done. So again, parametric design is the ability to allow objects to look and react with each other. So let's come in, let's do this site for real. Now spatial templates is another way a lot of our users like to use site ops. I can come in, set spatial templates up that can be very simple or very complex. This one has building, sidewalk, parking areas. And you're going to see that I'm going to come in, I'm going to use again, some of our basic CAD tools for example. We're going to use offset. Uh, we can have offset alignment, snaps, different things to help control the site. We'll offset that 270 feet so it lines up. Start that drawing solver, and there we go. Now I can simply see the layout. But again, with the spatial templates, it's just a starting point. You don't have to keep things a certain way. Let's say, for example, we'll just do something a little extreme here. Let's take this parking direction line, which controls how the parking looks, and see how I simply just picked on a point, moved it, and changed it. Let's add, a, for example, some parking features. Let's add a parking bay point. Again, just simply click on it, change the property, and there we go. Now we've got landscaping, bio, swell, any kind of thing we'd want to add in there. Let's add something as simple as handicap. Come in, pick handicap, define the area of where we want it, tell them how many we want to see. There we go. And then I can even change the material for that, and I could even come in and change the slopes to reflect ADA codes that need to be met for that certain area. So again, a lot of things inside site ops to help you to get very detailed with your layout. So let's come in. Now we're just going to add a simple driveway to this one. And again, driveways can be very simple, just from one point to another. They can connect parking lots, connect existing roadways to proposed roadways. And we can get very detailed. Here I'm making in multiple lanes in and out with tapers. So you see on the right hand side we got the properties. Hit enter, and there it is. Instantly we see that. We can add medians. Again, very far very a lot of things we can use. Now I've gone further along inside this design. I've added a few other spatial templates, but I want to show you one more. We'll add in a gas station. So again, just remember, add use the spatial templates. They're going to make life nice and simple for you. Bring this gas station up. All I got to do now, simply come in, do a quick offset. Maybe again, I want to align this up to a, a property line. Drop a few park, uh, a few driveways. Hit the solver button, and I'm done. By use of templates can make your life even simpler and even faster than site ops already does if you don't use them. So there we go, that quick I've created a gas station.
Now we have all of the kind of tools and kind of areas that need to be addressed. Let's say, for example, what if we had an out parcel? Don't know what we're going to do over here, but we definitely want to grade this, especially at the time that we're doing the grading for the rest of the project. Identify areas, and we'll, we'll just quickly come in and create an out parcel from this area. Let's change a few parameters. Maybe I don't want the setback to be that far away. So then when it slopes, it's going to be right up against there at a very small <clears throat> slope area. So let's come in. Let's add a detention pond. Now, you can tie in stormwater into existing catch basins, existing ponds. You can come in and have the software do conceptual design. Or you can come in and just outline and create your own stormwater pond. So there we go. But it does have properties you can change as well. Another great tool we've added inside of SiteOps is a sweep analysis path. And what this is, it gives the user the ability to define the path of a vehicle and then be able to see how that vehicle routes through that path. Then we'll look at, for example, a transfer truck and how it comes into the entrance of a project. Then set a point to be able to represent that vehicle. We can also go back, for example, and see how does it deal with the dock areas. The typical type of things that a client would want to see whenever you're helping to design a project. Again, we add this inside, inside of SiteOps to help the project go forward. Now let's grade this site. This is where we're going to see the cost. Look in the lower right hand corner, you'll see the numbers moving because it's doing a conceptual grading plan uh, to make sure that we haven't made any assumptions wrong. We've got red is cut, blue is fill, yellow means very little elevation change, and purple, that's retaining wall. Sign up has the ability to look at import and export costs, grading costs, wall costs, to look at what is the best thing to do for this site. We can see contours, we've turned them on, just get an idea of how is it going to look at sloping the parking lot, what direction get some concepts as we're going through with the project. We can see the images buildings are three-dimensional. We can even see the dumpster areas on the past fast food restaurant, for example. So again, very nice little quick layout that you can visually see what's happening on this project. Let's even take a look at geotech. So if you do know when your geotech for a site, once you get it in, input it in and see how the rock or unsuitable soil, contaminated soil, see how it's going to affect the site, not just from a design, from a cost standpoint. Now, once we got the grading done, the next thing they need to do is piping. Piping is just a click of a button, and we've done some conceptual piping. Now, when we get through with optimization, it will look completely different. It will optimize what is the best way to move dirt versus piping uh, that we see here. And you'll typically see piping come in with a lot less piping uh, to meet the needs that you need to and a lot more sheet flowing of water. Once you've got a design, you would actually save it. And you want to go out and submit this software optimization. Optimization is where the software is going to look at from thousands to millions of options on a site and say, what's the best way to grade and pipe the layout we've just created? So you would actually tell it, I want to send this off. At this point, you just wait for an email. Once the email comes back, it's going to go in and say, go back and look at your results and see what's happened. Now, here's this same site with and without rock. So we can see there's a good bit of money uh, cost due to adding in the rock, but the detail is a very detailed budget that you can see you have your topsoil, your cut, fill, exporting, retaining walls, fine grading, your on-site improvements such as curb, gutter, asphalt. We have all that information in here with the unit quantity and unit cost. And then we come into your stormwater. Then we see a nice cost, a little over 2.9 million. Now we also bring this in for an output is an Excel, but you also have DWG and Land XML files that you would take the design that you want to go forward with the construction document phase. For example, pick, a, pick the DWG, open it up inside of Civil 3D. We'll turn off a few layers. Now we give you finished grade and finished subgrade contours because we do grade the subgrade because you can put those material thicknesses in there. We also give you three line curb sections. We give you all the information you need to get to pick this up and go forward in your design. But SiteOps thinks just like a civil engineer would. For example, civil engineer when he's doing a grading plan is going to take an existing tin and he's going to do a comparison against the proposed tin. We normally get enough budget to run through four or five cycles and we're out of time or money. With site options, you can do millions of those same cycles in a fraction of a time it takes you to do just one. So let's zoom in, finish floor elevation. Again, you can control it. You can let site ops figure out the best one, three line curb section, piping with your length and slope, spot elevations, parking, parking counted. And then over on the right hand side, you can see that the part the piping looks a little better. And here's an actual storm drain design table with everything from rim elevations, invert, in and out, additional information, all the way down to the amount of impervious surface. A great time saver uh, so that you don't have to figure that out. So this is basically site ops in a in a glimpse.